Greetings and hallucinations to all you people out there in FAF land. This is going to be my second cast for the day, and it is a one versus one between the all-powerful TA for life as UEF and Yamadharma as Cybern, another very competent and adept one versus one player. This should be an awesome game. Good matchup. Um, the map is Certus Major. Very interesting map and one that gets played quite a bit. There's a large civilian outpost in the center. Tons of reclaim going on all over the map and a lot of little passages and uh, drops are effective on this map and runbys are effective on this map. Sometimes it is kind of hard to keep track of where everything is going on. And here we're going to see the common ploy by most players. They walk their ACU up to the edge and build a factory up here to save them the time of walking all the way around this hook. We're going to see second air from both players on the Hydro, followed by the mother of all power spams, uh, hoping to take full advantage of all of the reclaim on the map and pull some early teching. Uh, should lead to some interesting happenstances. Going to see scouts coming out for TA for life. Getting a move on, trying to spot. I'm sure, positively sure, that he is looking for that very aggravating first bomber out of the second air factory. And it is building. TA has made the excellent call of going first interceptor, assuming that Yamadharma is going to push first bomber. He is going to swing down here. I think he has anticipated the bomber, but is he going to sight it? No, he is going to run to the other side, leaving that bomber out to grab this engineer. Oh, the engineer has already built his factory, so it's not going to be that big a deal. Second bomber as well. That is going to be devast ah, Nice save. Very nice save for TA for life, salvaging two of those engineers. He now has three interceptors up, and those are going to be able to come in and clean out those bombers. They're aggravating the ever-living daylights out of you. I hate bombers and raids and everything else that throws you off your balance, but I do realize that that is good gameplay, so kudos to people who are able to pull it off. A bomber out for TA for life now. He is going to try to snag that engineer for the expansion. If he can kill it, ah, terrible bomb dropping. The UEF bomber was balanced, and it is significantly better than it once was, but sometimes it still does miss, which is a major problem. Yamadharma has gone for a much heavier investment in air, and for now he is going to secure air control. Both ACUs moving to the center, hoping for some of this reclaim. TA for Life got there first, and he was able to kill off those T1 point defense with his artillery. Odd to see 100% artillery spam from a UEF player. That is a bit of an odd choice. I'm not sure how he's going to fare with that. So many Mantis coming in. He needs to get his commander out of there. He has no backup. This is not going to end well. Mantis Swarm plus an ACU and he has no units but those tanks are going to run by him. It seems like Yamadharma could have gone for an early kill there. I'm not sure why he didn't. He had a Jester up there too. TA for Life is going to have to scramble now but now we have problems. Major problems for TA for Life. There's a run by down here. And there are not a whole lot of units to deny it, but a strategically placed point defense is going to push those over. He's still going to lose three mass extractors, and that is only going to buy him time. Because these mantis are going to run around at the other side, but units are coming, and they will help him out. I'm seeing T2 land over here for TA for life. Still on, ah, there's a T2 factory. It looks like Yamadharma has teched much more than TA for Life has, and with these early Mantis raids, TA for Life is significantly distracted, so he will not be countering anytime soon. Yamadharma investing in all of these tier 2 mass extractors, he is going to get up to 69 mass income. 
quite impressive this early. 11 minutes on this map. And now the units begin to collide. The tier 2 for TA for life pushing towards the front. Those pillars are going to be very effective at denying the Manta Spam. Much more concentrated firepower when in a narrow choke like this. It's going to be easier to deny those. And we're also seeing pushback in the mid. Medusa's with that awesome stun feature. I love Medusa's. Taking out that pillar that was guarding the center. And now we're going to see an opening here. Map control has once again shifted. It looks like TA for Life is controlling just over half. And he has started to come back. He is now within about 15 mass income of Yamadharma. Yama still holding a slight lead on that. And he has begun to throw up some point defense in some strategic locations. This is a nice choice here, covering the center choke pushing hoplites up to the north, although he's going to have to do something about those bombers. And then a point defense here. T2 Engineer down south. Not sure what that's going to start building, but it will be interesting to see. I have been waiting for either the TAC Missile Com or a TAC Launcher to come up for Yama. Attack missiles are an extremely popular choice on this map because of the confined space. It can be incredibly effective. Yamadharma has anticipated it with these TMD placed all around his tier 2 mass extractors, hoping to deny that. Um, stealth and mobile missile launchers coming into use. Cybern just has so many unique options. Unfortunately, they do not hold up to the tanky UEF units. You have to hit and run. I don't know. Rhinos do pretty well versus pillars. Not so much on rough terrain. But you have to use the hoplites to kite and hope that your opponent does not like to use mobile shields because sometimes those can really screw with you. T3 for Yama as well as for TA for Life. They both hit T3 at almost exactly the same time. We're seeing a mirror play here. Drops coming out for TA, getting engineers down to suck up that reclaim. We're seeing Percival's for TA and a couple of Loyalists out for Yama. He is going to try to overwhelm the UEF forces before he can get the Persils to the front. I'm sure he knows that they're coming. Let's check the scouting info and the reclaim numbers for both of these guys. Yama not doing a whole lot of scouting. It seems like he has some bad patches where there's a lack of information. Whopping 22k reclaim, pulling 94 mass down. 20,000 reclaim for TA for life. Having mild power issues, but it looks like he's keeping a fairly decent balance on that. And once he gets all of these Percivals up to the front, that is really going to change things and swing towards his favor, at least where the Percivals are. Cybern really can't keep up with Percivals unless you do so with Loyalists and run them down. And we are seeing some mobile shields coming out. This is going to be a dangerous little run by Percival's successfully knocking off two or three of those loyalists. The remainder are going to be picked up by rhinos, it looks like. Not rhinos, pillars. We are talking about UEF here. UEF does not have a rhino. TA for life is going to lose his proxy base down here, and he is going to take away Yama's proxy base. Fair is fair, even is even. But it looks like Yama has managed to field an incredibly dangerous little group of units here. This does not look like much, but there is a lot of T3 in here. There are four Percivals out for TA for life at this location, but with this much concentrated firepower... No, nope, Percivals are still going to win. TA for life focus firing those Loyalists, knocking them out of the way and then retreating slightly while still firing. We do have a T3 mobile artillery out for Yama. 
taking advantage of that massive area of effect on that artillery to try and lay down some carpet damage on these units, soften it up for the next push. He is going to try for the next push, mixing Medusas in still at this stage to try and get that stun effect. Once again, the map control has swung. Yama commanding a bit over half. And he is also pushing in and taking some more away. Still, massive eco advantage. He has widened it again, 134 to 82, pulling in 50 mass more than TA for life is, and also out reclaiming him by about 5K. Bricks now up here on the ledge. This is an awesome little play here. Bricks using their range to lay down some fire on the build power down here. Backing up a little bit now that he's seeing these units come in, but the more Percival's TA for life is able to get on the field, the less Cybern is going to be able to oppose him. But right now, Yamadharma is just overwhelmingly in control of the land just through sheer power of numbers. I do not see any T4s as of yet. That is most likely the resource allocation upgrade. TA for life is probably not going to go for a fat boy. I don't see a fat boy being as useful on this map as it could be on some unless you have really good air control. You could park the fat boy up here and take out these bases from the ledge, but at the same time, a monkey lord will be able to pin a fat boy very easily and do so for far less mass. Monkey lord will be able to counter pretty effectively on this. Cybern still pushing, still aggravating, still raiding, trying to get down here and knock out these emplacements. And so far, there are no units in the southern side that can deal with them. This is what you got to do with Cybern. Push, push, push. Suck all the units to one side. Once you get all the units up here, you hold and you push on the other side where he has no units prepared for you. We're seeing Tier 2 air finally come out on the field. We went all the way through the T3 land stage with hardly any T2 air, mainly just seeing interceptors. And finally at 30 minutes, we're seeing Corsairs and T2 gunships out. Will the bricks prevail? That is the question. Even number of bricks and percivals. But we do have cover fire from all of these T3 mobile artillery. That is going to make the difference and knock those out. TA for life with his little transports and little engineers just dropping everywhere. All you have to do is reclaim one T3 wreck and all of those engineers and that transport is worth it. If you can snag three or four, that is better. That was RAS upgrade and he did jump immediately to T3 air. He is going to start destroying all of the eco that he possibly can with that strap bomber. The trouble with Cybern strap bombers is they do not kill a tier 2 mass extractor in one pass. That is going to be a major problem for him. They leave the mass extractors with 250 health so he is able to kill mass extractors much slower giving these interceptors time to slowly whittle away at the health. Sam's down for TA for life. He is going to have none of that strap bomber push that is going to totally deny the airspace right here at this point because there are not any ASF on the field. Two more strap bombers and a third for Yamadharma. He has seen his opportunity in this T in this uh, T3 air push and he is going to take it. Harassment to the max, but I don't know that this is going to do him any good. Normally I would say that that is way too much mass wasted, but at the moment he's pulling over twice as much mass as TA for life is so he can afford these strap bombers. TA for life is finally moving to T3 air. Going to start pushing some ASF. I believe he was probably hoping to outpace Yama while he was building those strap bombers but Yama Dharma has very quickly shifted over to ASF production and he is going to start stockpiling his own to maintain air superiority which I think he lost in the production of all of those strap bombers. Massive cloud of interceptors here for TA for life. And now 
the map is starting to swing again. TA for life looks like he's finally starting to creep over the halfway mark on map control. Unfortunately, all of this harassment has wrecked his economy. He's down to 58 mass versus 194 for Yama. That is incredible. But he is still staying in the game, still trying to win. I think air superiority is going to be his best bet at this point. He is able to hang on to it while both players are T3 air. Yamadharma with that superior eco is going to be able to push strap bombers which is going to wreak havoc with any units that TA for life is pushing forward. Excuse me folks, going to yawn all up in your ear. I do apologize, but work puts me out pretty early in the morning, so occasionally at this time in the afternoon, I am ready for a siesta. Strap Bomber under stealth going around the backside. The air did not see it. He is going to overextend his air over this flag. Don't know why he's not going for build power. I think that would actually be a more effective target, considering how little damage he's doing to mass extractors with that was a good choice. That one was under an upgrade. TA for life getting worked back into a corner. This is not looking good. He has units coming at him from every side. I think there's a song in there as well. A strap bomber out for him. He has two strap bombers on the field right now, and I believe he is. No, he is beginning to lose his air superiority. This is going to be a major problem. He's losing land and losing air quickly. Yama is now pushing significantly more ASF. Three strap bombers coming in. The ambassadors have a good mix. Those are ambassadors. Yes. The ambassadors have a good mix of area of effect and damage. They are a pretty brutal strat bomber. Aeon strats have higher damage but much lower area of effect. Cybern has humongous area of effect and far less damage. UEF and Seraphim place pretty well in between them. T1 bombers out for Yama just harassing. As we've seen all game, harassment is key to playing Cybern, and Yama has harassment in spades. This is just incredible micro that we've seen from him. Being as aggravating as he possibly can be. And right now it looks like he's pretty confident. He is building SAMs, he's building point defense, he's got his whole side locked down. It's really looking like there's not much left for TA for life to do. The only thing he has going for him at this exact moment is the fact that he has a lot of reclaim. I'm not sure what he's going to do with it, but maybe, maybe there is something that he can work out. Right now I don't really see anything coming up more factories probably going to try to get more engineers out for this reclaim seeing a overwhelming force of ASF from Yamadharma he is probably going to go back to strat bomber production soon enough um, T1 bomber is trying to kill that Sam he has so much air right now Strat Bomber taking out that brick on the north side, and Percival's are going to come in and trap that. Not sure what his target was with that bomber, but it failed to get there, that is for sure. Looks like TA for Life is going to lose the southern side yet again. There is a Soul Ripper building for Yamadharma. TA for Life really needs to get on the ball and do something if he's going to salvage this game. There is strategic defense up. We're seeing SACUs about to go into production. Yamadharma has secured his position and he is gearing up for the long-term game while still keeping the pressure on TA for Life. T1 
TA throwing up shields everywhere to try and help out against these strap bombers and he is trying to cap off his eco once again still under a hundred mass income it's been almost impossible for him to get up to Yama's production level basically all that's kept him alive so far is that ridiculously tanky UEF ACU with a copious amount of overcharges and the might of the UEF Percival, although right now this is going to get hairy. We've got bricks coming in for TA for life. Oh man, he is lucky they did not focus fire him because with that many bricks, I think they could have easily killed his ACU. I realize, oh no, never mind. He has mini vet. 25,000 health on that ACU. He could have overcharged them all in the time that they focus fired him. Percival's marching to battle over here. Such overkill. 1,600 damage to kill a 200 health unit. <laughs> that is laughable. T3 point defense going up as well now, covering this choke. He's trying to make it hard for Yamadharma to get to him, concentrating his eco, concentrating his base, and throwing up the UEF shield T3 point defense combo. UEF shining as the defensive faction that it is just making it so hard to get killed we do have a bug now that is gonna fly out hopefully Yama may not realize that it's finished I'm surprised we have not seen a nuke I'm not seeing one if everyone right now is sitting around screaming zap zap there's a nuke right there in front of your face and you don't see it I really don't see it I don't think one exists alrighty looks like a slow point in the action I think we can afford a peek at the reclaim numbers Yamadharma pulling a massive 290 mass income that is ridiculous but he is minus 400 throwing up that nuke that we were just discussing I'm gonna go back to observer real quick because here comes the soul ripper and a lot of ASF the only thing going for TA for life is I think he does have a few SAM emplacements we're gonna see if it's enough Interceptors and ASF tearing up that Soul Ripper. If he is able to drop this Soul Ripper, that is going to be so much mass for him. He is going to be able to build whatever he wants. Infinite mass has just dropped right on his doorstep. I'm going to see how he takes advantage of it. On the reclaim, Yamadharma is 97k. TA for life, 170,000 mass reclaim. And he is going to start climbing massively once he starts dipping into that Soul Ripper. He's going to have to rebuild his power in a major hurry, though. He lost that to that Ripper, and he needed to burn off that reclaim. Yet again, we have a push into the southern side, but we do have two Percivals here. They are going to die to that brick. Yes, they are going to die to the bricks, but we're able to drop one and get another to half health. Hopefully... The bricks will not single-handedly wreck this entire thing, but you never know. So many ASF, my goodness. All right, question is, oh, the bug is gone. And he is rebuilding his strat defense. Strat has just started loading for Yamadharma, but he is minus 200 mass. Let's see, what is he building that is pulling that much? assisting his nuke defense for some reason it's already loaded don't know why he would be doing that and I don't see he must just be running too many factories at once when you're that negative there is no way in hell that you're ever gonna get a strat out of that or a uh, nuke out of that so actually if TA is able to keep his economy relatively balanced which he's very good at Yes, he is floating just enough mass. He is going to be able to build full speed with this nuke defense. You can see it ticking away. 
And he's actually going to be able to deny that nuke. That is going to be a massive waste of mass on Yamadama's part. So sad to see someone eco crash like that when they're trying to build a nuke. It was a good idea and it would have worked if you just managed your eco a little better. And the Percivals are venturing out into the world. We see a couple of Percivals, a couple of Demolishers, and quite a few flak. They're going to park up here on the ridge and try to lay down some fire on that center base. TA for life still cashing in at around 100 mass. Yamadharma, 100,000. <laughs> that is incredible. TA for life has like 120% more reclaim than Yamadharma does. And when you're talking 100,000 mass reclaim versus 220,000 mass reclaim, that is a hell of a lot of mass. That's incredible to see. We are up to an hour now on freaking Sirtis Major. This is incredible. But this game has so much action going on that I really haven't even noticed it's been going on that long. For those of you who have questioned my choice of running plus four in games, this is why I do it. When I don't know how long a game is going to be, here we have experienced a one hour game. This replay is probably going to be just over 30 minutes. And we're able to catch all of this epicness and not burn up your entire day watching it. It's like condensed awesomeness. <laughs> Alright, shameless self-promotion over. I will not torture you with that again. It is really personal preference. Honestly, I don't have the patience to sit through hour-long replays, so this is what you get, folks. This is a product of my mental laziness, is the truth of the matter. All right. The nuke is no closer to being done. Yamadharma is still minus 250 mass. My good sir, you are not reclaiming enough and you have too much build power. TA for life, on the other hand, beautifully balanced economy. Plus 14, plus eight, plus 30, and down to minus 40, minus 15. Amazing thing to watch. TA for life showing his skills at using whatever mass he has available to him to the greatest extent that he can possibly push it. I don't know how he is still alive, but he is doing it. He is up to 115 mass income now. He's getting a little better. Yamadharma, I think, is getting lazy with his units. He is just turtling up and doing his own thing, expanding his eco, building up. Holy hell, that's a lot of strap bombers. Well. I actually think he has a significant chance of ending TA for life right now if he chooses. TA does have 25,000 health, but he does not have overshield. He is throwing up a secondary nuke defense just in case and still playing defensively and reaping reclaim. And is exactly what he's doing is harvesting reclaim to make up for an inferior economy. Here come the bombers. We're going to see if he survives this. I am going to be genuinely impressed if he is able to pull this off. The longer this goes, the more I get the impression that on some level he is toying with Yamadharma. He's going for the nuke defense, not for the ACU. He is going to get it. But his nuke is only half built, and he is still minus 300 mass. I don't know why you would... Why? Why are you going for the snipe when your nuke is only half built and you're that far negative? Don't understand. That was a really, really dumb target choice. Of course, I'm saying that to someone who has literally double my rank at ladder, but... Somehow I think I end up in the late game situation more than he does. And I can honestly say without a shadow of a doubt that that was a terrible target choice. He did take out the T3 power. Kudos for that. That is a good thing, but I, I just, I don't know. I have, I have my doubts. 
SACUs on the combat preset. They do have that EMP stun. Very effective at dealing with Percivals. You can see here, when they start firing at the Percivals, they completely disable them, allowing the bricks to just run over them with impunity. Alright, I think I am going to take back what I said. Because while he did kill the nuke defense, I think that was his primary target, but he did succeed in killing all three T3P gens of TA for life, severely hampering his power situation. So I guess on some level that was actually a decent uh, choice of targets because it did shut down his air production. And I don't think he had enough strats to kill the ACU. I, I just can't I, I would have waited. I would have balanced my economy and waited till my nuke was like 95% loaded and then sniped the nuke defense knowing that this one was not built recently enough to have loaded. I think things would have gone quite a bit better. TA for life, this time choosing to build his nuke defense significantly further away from the T3 power. I think that's very wise. Diving in headlong with his ACU to go overcharge that brick. This is going to be problematic. We do have Gunthers going up on the ledge. Hmm. Things are looking grimmer and grimmer for TA for life. Again, I'm ridiculously impressed that he's able to survive this long at this much of a mass disadvantage. I don't know... I, I think that that is probably 60% due to his skill as a player and 40% due to the fact that Yamadharma is just making ridiculously dumb choices. Uh, he has almost five times the mass income. Going for the same nuke defense again. This one's going to be loaded. He does have a megalith, which he's not using. And he is still mass crashed like all get out he's been building that nuke for like 30 minutes <laughs> oh, strap bombers wreaking havoc on this base and artillery not helping matters at all TA for life has definitely got a dilemma on his hands slowly getting worked back into a tighter and tighter corner and there's the missile launch and the nuke defense is still alive I think it's gonna get denied Megalith is finally on the move yes see how TA for life is balancing out he is still running Positive mass, has mass and storage, building nuke defense at the maximum pace. I think it'll be two hours before Yarma Dharma gets another nuke off, so I don't think we have anything to worry about at that on that front. Here come the strap bombers once again, going after the T3 power, it looks like ground fired right between those. He's gonna take out the entire power grid, but fortunately TA for Life was able to to get a secondary gen online. Strap bombers are going to start going down to Sam's, picking off a mass extractor. Uh, looks like, yeah, that is artillery. Oh, man. Such artillery up here. <laughs> Looks like Yamadharma is having fun at this point. He's just toying with TA for life. Well, I cannot believe that TA for Life has survived this long. He has been at a disadvantage roughly from 25 minutes 
I would have thought he would have lost at about that time, but he has managed to stretch this game out by an hour over when he technically should have lost. If anyone else had been playing this one versus one besides TA for life, perhaps he is hoping that Yamadharma will either crash or have a net disconnect or have to leave and he will win by default simply by a sheer force of will. TA for life hailing. You will not stop the UEF and he is throwing up all of the T2 shields he possibly can in a big hurry. He still has his nuke defense alive and it is loaded and he is holding out somehow. Against all this, he was able to kill that Megalith. I am assuming between the shield spam and the T3 point defense and this group of Percy's. I do apologize. I was kind of zoned out when that happened. <laughs> In this long of a game, I'm losing track of the progress. He has another infinite pile of reclaim at his disposal. Oh, 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 oh. That is the end well played TA for life holy cow that is an epic game if I ever saw one guys if you want to know how to play defensively never give up in the face of adverse circumstances that is how you do it <laughs> kudos to Yamadharma for beating that UEF turtle but that was an impressive game from TA for life Alrighty guys, that is definitely going to wrap it up for me. I am tired of talking, <laughs> and I am sure you are tired of hearing me talk. So, without further ado, closing remarks. As always, please send me replays. I need replays, especially if they're great ones. You can leave them in the comments below. You can send them to me on the forum. You can send them to me on the client. However you get them to me, I will look at them, and I will do my best to cast all of them. Thank you so much for watching, guys, and again, all of the support that you give me over the last, uh, it is a month now that my channel has been up, 400 viewers plus today, woot woot, let's have a party. All right, I am out of here, guys.